Mount Kilimanjaro, the highest freestanding mountain on earth, and the final climb in Sean Wisedale's quest to become the first person from Africa to climb the seven summits. On every other expedition, Sean's always behind the lens. But on this one, he's the star of the show. He's joined by a contingent of nine journalists who'll be sending pictures and this story live from the mountain. 15 South Africans and 30 Tanzanian porters and guides make up the team. The team doctor is Errol Gottlich. Patricia Glynn will write the daily diary and update the website. I'm really looking forward to this because, as Sean Weisdale would say, this is the dessert, this is the pudding mountain. After all the battles on much bigger mountains, this is the treat. Andrew Burden will report to a Johannesburg radio station. Caroline Hooper-Box is a journalist for a national newspaper. Njanji Chauki is a TV reporter for the national broadcaster. Jan Singleton is his colleague and a cameraman. Joe Prince is also a journalist for a national newspaper. Philip Fale is Sean's brother and the expedition cameraman. Joy Simmons is Sean's nearest and dearest. Robin Seabrook is Sean's cousin and a chartered accountant. David Seabrook is Robin's brother and he's a geophysicist. Heather Mills is David's partner and she's a ceramist. Emmanuel, Kennedy and Bongo are our fantastic Tanzanian guides. Diane Lucas is a TV producer and this is me. We flew to Mount Everest Base Camp in 1996 when Sean was first introduced to mountaineering. It's great to be here uh, for Sean's trip basically because we were there at the very start in 96 at uh, Mount Everest Base Camp when Sean said I'm going to come back and climb this hill. Since then he's done uh, six of the seven and we hope to be with him at Uhuru when he makes it seven. And then there's me, the good looking one of the expedition. From Johannesburg we flew to Moshi in Tanzania. It's a short drive from there to the base of the mountain. We took along enough luggage for a deep space mission. It was about one and a half tons in fact. And as usual, I was late. And with my brother Phil in tow, we rushed to make the boarding gate before it closed. Oh, well, we're on our way at last. Can't believe that uh, seven and a half years later, we're uh, right on the doorstep of the Seven Summit. So yeah, it's quite exciting, all of this. It's mid-February and the beginning of the rainy season, but the weather looks great, even at 22,000 feet, close to the altitude we'd be climbing to over the next week. Our first clear view of the mountain was the next morning, and what a sight. Just seeing the glacier made me think that up there, at nearly 6,000 meters above sea level, it was at least 10 degrees below zero, and here we were in t-shirts and shorts. The entrance to the Kilimanjaro National Park is a short drive from the hotel. It's at the Bachami Gate that we sign the register and take heed of the altitude warnings. It's also the point where hundreds of Tanzanian porters jockey for work on the mountain. Okay. Bit dusty, isn't it? Looking forward to a good walk up. Feeling good. And uh, yeah, gonna be strong. Good day. Oh, geez, it's quite busy and hectic here. 
So it's, it is a lot different to other mountains, but, it's, but it has a real charm. Eh? But I've got a big hill like, uh, ahead of us, and we mustn't forget that. Because it's all uh, fun and games now, but uh, I've, I've got a feeling that uh, when we get above 3,500, the day after tomorrow, we're going to start feeling it. We're very, very blessed though with all these guys around us who are going to be carrying our gear. You know? So it's, it's, it makes it a lot easier, maybe because we're not carrying as much weight. Uh, what is going on is uh, uh, these people here, they're trying to weigh the, uh, all this luggage to see that it's not exceeding to each porter. So there's a limit for every porter to carry. So they have to wait and then go. So we just go nice and slowly, we take it one day at a time and we drink lots of water and uh, get nice pictures and uh, enjoy it. The Machami route begins just above the agricultural zone. The route follows a directly upward direction to 3,000 meters at the Machami camp. Then we go up to 3,840 meters to Shira camp and we traverse the mountain to Barranco camp at 3,850. From there we go to Barafu camp at 4,600 and then the summit. It will take us five days and that's just slow enough to be able to acclimatize. Under the canopy of the tropical forest, it's cool and comfortable and the ideal way to begin this unforgettable trek. Decades of trekking has seen the surface of this route being vastly improved and maintained, but it's still a huff and a puff. This has really much improved since 97 when last I was here. There was absolutely no path. There were 12 people on the mountain. There were no mess tents, no chairs, um, and really no lose. So, Achilles, come on. This is the most enjoyable part of the whole mountain, within everybody's capabilities. It's nice and damp and cool. It's great. Well, I don't really know what to expect, so it's, um, it's difficult to, to compare what we've got now. But uh, it's tough enough for now. But uh, yeah, coping well. Two hours in, I'm smelling bad. <laughs> what does she smell like, eh? <laughs> Mixed nuts. <laughs> I'm eating some mixed nuts, but I feel that uh, most of them are the people I'm traveling with here. <laughs> That, of course, by Sean, the craziest nut of all. I'm having a great time. <laughs> and I'm enjoying the altitude. What are we at now? I think we're about two and, two and a half. God, OK. <laughs> I would have expected it was about three or four. How are your batteries? My batteries are perfect. Are your tanks full? Now we cut to I'm eating some nice bran. Keeps the stomach regular. Keeps me strong for the hike, huh? <laughs> How you doing? Fine, thanks. Fine. Yeah. Having a good time. What are you eating? I'm also doing the nutty bit, but there are a couple of fruits in here. Mm -hmm. Also, probably a couple in our crew. Get a clip in my schoon. A little stone in there somewhere. So we get it out. We're at about 2,300 meters which is about 700 meters higher than Joburg. We halfway. This is a halfway stop on the first day. Great. How many so, more hours? Yeah, we'll only get into camp at about half past six. So, a um, bit of a slog ahead. Mm -hmm. Altitude starts getting a bit more. Towards the end of the day, the route leads to the end of the rainforest zone and it becomes quite steep, heading into the Machami camp. Everyone's looking forward to a welcome rest. Yeah, it was a good day, huh? Mm. It was a great day. A uh, little bit of rain, and, uh, but I think, uh, yeah, good, man. Everybody's strong and well, eh? Huh? Yeah, is it a little tired? No, but not, not unusually so. Oh. Wow, I cannot believe it. I 
Wow. Oh, wow. potatoes. <laughs> yeah, big room. Dinner was prepared by the porters and our legendary chef, Im Safiri. And they really treated us like VIPs. It was quite amazing, actually. The meals were three-course feasts, and at the end of a long day's climbing, it's, it's great to be able to sit down and relax and enjoy a well-prepared meal with a, a great bunch of people and have a good laugh. And I was, I was really enjoying this climb. Early the next morning, the VIP service continues. Unbelievably, the guides arrive at our tent with a tray of hot drinks. It's such a pleasure having meals taken care of because it frees you up to just relax and enjoy the surroundings and also to try and get a bit of work done. Yeah, well, this is our system. We basically, we, I've set the system up so that we can send um, pictures and, uh, and, le and uh, word documents from here back to South Africa via uh, this, uh, this connection. It works quite effectively. We just sent back six pictures and Patricia's diary. We sent back um, two pieces of uh, information for Joe and for Caroline of the newspapers. So it works very well. It's a bit uh, sort of in the field, but as long as you look after it and make sure it doesn't get water on it, it uh, it's brilliant. Early morning is when the weather is clearest. The ideal time to transmit as the satellite signal is strongest. It's also when the crater is most visible. Best light to catch a few invaluable snapshots of these diminishing glaciers. Then it's breakfast to take in the energy for the day ahead. This is porridge. Some papaya on the table. Above the rainforest zone, we touch 3,000 meters into the moorland region. The vegetation has become a lot sparser. It's also become a lot steeper, but that doesn't seem to set the porters back. Some of them have climbed Kili hundreds of times, and even with their hefty loads, they literally scream past. Hey, how are you? They carry the most unexpected cargoes imaginable. Who needs an iPod when you have a Tanzanian jukebox right there on your belt? This sort of terrain is fantastic to climb. There's lots of bouldering, so you can get away with a good pair of trainers and keep your boots dry for the summit bid. And there's also so much to see and photograph, because the ecology on Kilimanjaro is unbelievable. And there's also live entertainment all the way up. Thanks to our Swahili guides. By the afternoon, it becomes a lot cooler and the route becomes very slippery. It's always difficult choosing just how much to wear when you leave the camp. But for the preservation of warmth and energy, it's a good idea to have wet weather gear on standby.
Six hours into day two, we reach Shira Camp, where our chef, Msefiri, is once again cooking up a storm. Waking early, the great African Empress is cloaked in her garment of snow. We got a bit of snow last night. It went below zero last night. Um, I didn't have the greatest night's sleep, but it can. It happens like that when you get up to altitude. And um, yeah, but getting up this morning and seeing the seeing the peak is amazing. The only the thing about it is it looks so close, but it's actually quite deceiving. It looks incredibly close. I mean, we were two days away from it. I mean, we were talking on the radio just now and. Midnight tomorrow we begin the ascent. Uh, you know, so yeah, I think today's going to be quite a tough test. So we'll take it slowly, poly poly, and uh, give it the best. Leisurely breakfasts are all part of this unique experience, and it's a good time to catch up on how everybody's reacting to the thinning air. I woke up with a bit of a dull headache, um, but very dull, and it's still there, so I'm not worried about it. I'm just going to drink lots of liquid. And I've also just had a quarter of a fast forward bar, so that should get me on the road. Did you have a good night's sleep? Not really, yeah. I don't know, I just had this, this like mild nausea and just sort of hung around them. And besides that, Phil doesn't exactly uh, keep it the quietest of tents. So. <laughs> just just joking. <laughs> you hear about the Kilimanjaro walk and everyone says to you it's dirty and there's so many people and it's just it's not worth doing and I've just felt this whole time it's not dirty it's the most beautiful walk I've ever seen it's like wandering through a Lord of the Rings movie being the star yeah oh. lovely mm. yeah I expected there to be masses of people I expected there to be a queue up the mountain actually and so I mean there are people around but I think it's still you know it's still maintained it's like um, you know niceness it's very yeah it's really beautiful you know yeah and the food's been amazing and yeah no, I think we've been really spoiled and yeah it's excellent I've been warm in my sleeping bag <laughs> so, yeah, it's good oh, no, everything's great 450,000 years ago, Kilimanjaro was an almighty volcano. Being a geology specialist, David could see and read things on the slopes that we simply overlooked. It's been good. Yesterday was good. There was a lot of good stuff. There was some really nice um, volcanic glass and some volcanic breccia, which is really nice to see. And some, you can see some of the lava flow as well, which is great. It's nice to see it in the, in the nature, not in a lab, you know. A long day lies ahead as the team will make an effort to ascend to the altitude of 4,650 meters, the highest most of them have been before. The good Dr. Errol explains some of the challenges that lie ahead. The biggest thing that's going to affect most people, I would reckon, is their altitude. Um, you'll probably find along the route, when you get to about over 4,000 meters, you'll start seeing a few casualties en route. Um, some of the guys sitting down, feeling a bit headachy, nauseous. I think obviously important to drink, uh, important to prevent sunburn, keep your sunglasses on, prevent the glare, and just to take it really slowly and adapt to the, to the altitude. Every day is just a little bit more of a challenge and um, coming in yesterday I wasn't feeling great, you just start feeling it and I think today we'll just feel it a bit more and uh, I didn't drink enough yesterday so today I'm going to drink a lot more, try and, try and drink uh, three litres. But you've got to watch it, hey? you can just get out of kilter. Hey? Today I'm expecting to see if I can cope. Today is the day I'm going to see if I can actually get up that mountain because we're going to uh, see if how the altitude is. So I'm not worried about the walk because it sounds like it's quite flat and not so steep. Um, but I'm already, if I just walk a little distance, I'm losing my breath already. So I'm a bit worried about that. But I'll just concentrate on my breathing and stop if I lose my breath and recover. Our guides and porters go about striking the camp and loading up while we get our bits and bobs together. I started the day very optimistic, but the clouds have just pulled in as they do apparently every morning before you leave camp. So I suspect once again we won't see the views and we'll be rained on all day, but we will be a happy little bunch nonetheless. And then the game begins. 
For the first few hours out of the camp, it's cool and clear. From the Moor and Healthland zone, we gradually make our way up towards the Alpine Desert region. Here the vegetation thins out. At 4,200 meters, there's just not enough oxygen to sustain tree and shrub growth. In the Highland Desert, it's summer every day and winter every night. Under these conditions, only the hardiest plants can survive. I couldn't resist picking up the spare digital camera to catch a few shots of this mountain stream trickling down from the glacier. Because the glaciers are receding, there's a good chance that these streams will dry up in just a few years' time. And while I was about it, I shot a quick interview with Brother Phil. I'm doing alright, eh? Yeah. I sort of feel a slight headache coming on, but I'm doing alright. Taking some Cenex to open up my nostrils so I can breathe properly. Otherwise, I'm alright. Yeah, I'm drinking lots and taking nice and easily. So I think it's going to be a good day. Keeping my breath going consistently well and making sure I'm right. But Mount Kilimanjaro would rise to haunt Phil in the later stages of the climb. Ice on the African equator may seem like an alien concept, and the disparaging warning is that it may all disappear soon. Global warming appears to be diminishing Kilimanjaro's ice cap at an alarming rate. We eventually reach the base of the Lava Tower, a prominent feature at 4,630 meters. This is the highest point of the day. From here, it's all downhill to the Barranco camp at 3,860, where we will spend the night. Once again, we arrive at the camp to find everything perfectly set up. We sit down and enjoy the surroundings into nightfall before Emmanuel briefs us on what to expect tomorrow. Tomorrow, you're going to walk from 3,950 meters above sea level to 4,600 in about seven hours. We're supposed to be there around four. Okay. That should be best. Mm -hmm. But after this, that means, uh, for me it's no problem, but for you, you'll have very less time to sleep. Mm -hmm. That means in the midnight, the time to start climbing up, you'll be still tired. So to avoid this, please, even tomorrow, I would like to stay in a group, not separate. And the chance we have just for photos, just take photos and then proceed. Not just lost most of the time on the way. I know the photograph has lots of information you need about this. But also we still have lots of things to do. So try to balance. It was the eve of our summit bid, and almost everyone wanted their stories to be sent through. So Phil and I set up the satellite phone as usual, and we sent our high altitude journal back to South Africa. The next morning I walked around the camp. Derek had had a better night's sleep and he felt strong enough to shoot an interview. What sort of achievement will this be for you? You know, the Seven Summits have been a long journey, Derek. It's been, a, it's, it's kind of a journey over seven continents. I've seen the world from basically the highest point on every continent. 
and I've shot the pictures from there as well. So for me, I, I think I couldn't really push myself any further than that. Um, I'm, 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 I'm happy with that. The climb continues with an eight-hour endurance session during which we will ascend the Barranco Wall. The porters know this to be the toughest part of the route. It's steep, slippery and seemingly insurmountable. And it leads up to the last cap, Barafu, at 4,600 meters above sea level. So we're heading up the Barranco Wall now. Uh, it's a direct, you can see how many people there are on it because there's, there's a bit of a backlog. It looks like uh, the weather's going to be pretty favorable today. Not as much rain and obviously we're above the clouds. That makes things a bit easier. We've got about seven hours. It's nearly a thousand vertical meters to do today. So we better get on with it. The Barranco wall demands real climbing skill. Finding the hand and footholds on the rocks is harrowing enough, but how the porters manage with 30 kilos loaded on their heads is beyond belief. We went up to 4.6 yesterday, we're at 4.2 today now. Uh, it took us about, yes, that took us about five hours to get to 4.6. And it's now taken us an hour and a half to get up to the same altitude. So it's quite, we're sort of rolling, you know, we're going up and down. And, but it's a great place, it's changing, you know. I love the way that the, the clouds come in and then disappear, you know. So suddenly you've got a view and then it's obscured. You can see how we've moved out away from these Labelia and Giant Esnacea and we're moving into more basically volcanic rock. And at this altitude, on any other mountain, we get a lot of snow, but we're close to the equator. And that's the reason why we've got, you know, great life at uh, three and a half thousand meters. An hour later, with the camp not far off, the temperature drops rapidly and it begins to snow. This is just uh, awesome uh, from being in dire straits about uh, about 10 minutes ago in a snow blizzard uh, to, to this view. Uh, cheap as man. It's been a bit hectic in the last hour walking up to this camp. We had a bit of wind and a bit of snow and getting into our tents was a bit uh, of a relief to get out of the weather conditions but the snow settled and the wind's dying down so it's improving. We're just waiting for our luggage and mattresses so things should be cosy soon. So we're doing okay. How's it going there? Wet man, wet. Not hot. Combination would be good. <laughs> Thank you. 
the night before a summit, but is always a nervous time. You're worrying about the weather, about how you're going to cope with the altitude, the cold, and it can really get the better of you if you let it. I got very little sleep, and uh, the bad news when I woke up was that Phil had suffered a seizure. Uh, he was okay. Uh, Derek wasn't that well at all, unfortunately. And I really have, geez, the whole night I've just been shaking. Yeah. And I had a few critical decisions to make. It's 5 to 12 and, um, yeah, Phil and Derek are going to stay. Errol's going to stay with Phil. Yeah, it's not a good situation with Phil, but uh, what else can we do? Eh? It'd be ideal to get him down right now, but that's not going to happen, unfortunately. So, Errol's going to stay here, and uh, yeah, we're just going to go up, I guess. Thanks for staying here. Eh? It's a pleasure. I'll see you in the morning. Okay, thanks. Hey, it's rough being the doctor. <laughs> it's part of the deal. Thanks for the sacrifice. Eh? It's fine. Okay. See you tomorrow. Can you go in front, please? How are you, David? I'm fine, thanks, man. Feeling good. In oh, front, good. all the ladies. Okay. Had a good sleep. No headache? Oh, I'm good. Cool. Yep. How's it, Joe? Hey, How are you doing? Oh, great. Uh, looking forward to it. Okay, excellent. Yeah. How you got your How's it in Janji? No, I'm okay, man. Just a bit disappointed that two of uh, the team members are not coming up with us, but otherwise, okay. Cool. Sure. How are you, Robin? Sure, I'm fit, man. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Okay, good. 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 Right, so we're a little bit later than what we expected to be. Uh, we were meant to leave at 12, it's 12.30. So we had a couple of delays, but looks like everybody's in good shape. I'm not feeling that great at the moment with Phil and Derek being left behind. And especially Phil. But Errol's with him, and uh, so I know he's in good hands. It's just amazing that Errol could sacrifice it's time to take him, to look after them. But uh, we've got about seven hours ahead, so we'll have a blood up there and see how it goes. On Kilimanjaro, the push up to the crater rim through the night, up that steep summit pyramid, is, is pretty tough. Everyone made it through to the dawn, and seeing the sun rise, it really motivates you to continue. Well, this is it, eh? Uh, pretty close to Stella Point. Probably about another half an hour to go out there then. About another hour to the summit, I think. But the sun's out now. It's absolutely magnificent. This is what we came for. It's been a long journey. And I must say that these views definitely compensate for the hard slog. Oh, it's going to be a beautiful morning. It's about minus six at the moment. We looked at the uh, thermometer. So I'm just going to head up and go and join the rest of the crew. Feeling very good. Uh, our water's iced up, which is a bit of a problem for the way back down. And I'm sure we'll be all right. Once we reached the crater rim, I knew the summit was only about an hour away. And I was watching the others who were about to reach their first summit. And it sort of reminded me of the beginning of this long journey to climb the highest mountain on each continent. And what a great adventure it had been. And what a great ending it was going to have.
How's it, Aaron? I'm all right. Akuna Matata. Very well. Good, good. That's good group. Strong people from South Africa. <laughs> we you. like that and made it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Are you Caroline? Uh, I've got a guardian angel, sir. So okay, I'll get there. <laughs> Long journey, and oh, I'm just so happy to be here. It's kind of weird. It's the highest we can go in Africa, and so um, I'm just so glad that it's worked out. You know, I'm just so privileged and so blessed, and I, I just hope that I hope that other people who um, get to find their talent, because this journey, the Seven Summits journey, has helped me to find mine. Yeah. We've all got our own mountains to climb, but I just hope that people find, whether they get up them or whether they don't, that they find and appreciate their talents. And, yeah. What about that great statement you made on Everest? Say it again for us. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I said on Everest, if you want to get to the top, you've got to go to the top. And what that means is you need determination, you need perseverance, stamina, concentration, and all these elements. It takes up so much. Jeez. And... Uh, I've got a lot of people to thank. I really got a lot of people to thank for this. And Sean Foy, you've shown us. I mean, the first South African for seven summers. Amazing. Thanks, guys. Kilimanjaro, Kilimanjaro, Kilimanjaro. Kilimanjaro, Kilimanjaro. Is, will I do it again? No way. It was difficult. <laughs> I think it was the most challenging and rewarding thing I've done in my life. And it's been, I just feel very good about doing it. It's been fantastic. It's fantastic. I got this hairdo that people would pay thousands for in Joburg for free. So I'm, I'm chuffed. No, no, seriously. The trip was, it was fantastic. The most challenging thing I've ever done in my life. And um, come out feeling a lot stronger. This is going to carry over into a lot of aspects of my life, which is great. Yeah, it's also looks like I really, really loved it a lot. Um, I'm, I'm coming back, I want to do the arrow route with my wife, so that's what I want to do. But I loved it, I actually loved it. Some 
character building. Uh, I, I'd love a knee replacement right now. I think my hip will go in about two weeks. But apart from that, we had a lot of fun and learned a lot about our own strengths. And most of them are mental. It's mental strength that gets you up this mountain and nothing else. I, I mean, apart from the help of some wonderful Tanzanians. What a great trip, eh? Uh, great mountain. Yes. Great people, great group, great food. Great logistics, great weather. Oh, what, what, what can you say? It was really um, oh, I, I, the, the nicest of the seven that I climbed. I'll say the nicest. All the elements, really, absolutely amazing. And uh, yeah, we'll definitely be there. Sean, having uh, the seven summits under your belt now, how do, how do you feel? Oh, it's amazing, Derek. I'm really, I'm really, 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 really chuffed. Um, it's, oh, it's been a long journey. It's been seven, seven years since we first went to Everest, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it wouldn't have been possible without a lot of people. Um, you know, uh, all the people who I've climbed with over the years, um, without the sponsor, without everybody on the team that just went up, this mountain was very special. And you know, it hasn't sunk in properly yet, but. I think in time I'm going to start appreciating what you know what what it was all about. I will go until I know I'll find a peace inside me. However far to fill my heart, this is my mouth. I must go. I will go until I know I'll find a peace inside me. And that's really it. Sean is the 79th person in history to climb the highest mountain on each continent. The difference is he's probably the only climber on earth to record the feat on every venture with his own world-class camera work. Sean Wisedale, or Wisey as we know him, we salute you.